Greetings and salutations. This is Frederick John. Today we're going to build a game engine in Elixir. The date is February 27th, and the game we're going to be building is the classic card game War. Here's a screenshot of what it'll look like when we're done. When the game starts, each player will have 26 cards. You can see the progress of the game, and there'll be a, a button that a user can click, which is going to flip over to the, the computer card and their card. So let's take a look at our plan of action. The first thing we're going to do is create a new mix project with the dash dash sup flag. That's going to create a supervised application. The next step is we'll need to create a module for playing cards. Now this module is going to have to produce a deck of cards that's going to have 52 total cards, four unique suits of 13 different values. We'll then need to define the structure of our game. How are we going to model what a game is? So we'll need a separate file to demonstrate what constitutes a game. We'll also need to determine the state management. How are we going to deal with state? We're going to bring in a gen server and we're going to look at using the gen server, which is an OTP behavior for managing the state of our card game. So let's get started. From the command line, we can run the command mix new war dash dash sup for a supervised application. We can cd into that directory and then run the initial test just to make sure that everything is working correctly. The results of which should be two test, zero failures. We'll use a test driven approach in creating our application. Let's create a new folder at libtestwar and we'll create a file called decktest.exs. And then we're going to create a test that's going to test if our deck is going to be able to produce a new deck of cards. So let's do that now. Okay, here I am in a new mix project. I've created a folder called war under the test directory and then a file called deck underscore test dot exs. And then here I'm going to want to use xunit dot case to include the xunit behavior. And now we're going to write our first test. We're going to use test driven development where we create test to define the behavior that we want and then we write the code that is going to satisfy the test. The first thing that we're going to test is that a new deck is going to contain 52 cards. And in order to do that, we're going to create a temporary variable called deck and set that by using the function war deck and we'll, we'll call it new and this function doesn't exist yet, we're going to create it next. And what we want is to assert that the length of our deck is equal to 52. So in order to get this to pass, we'll have to go to the lib war deck module. And you can see here I've defined a module inside the deck module called card. So let's write a new function but before we write our new function, let's handle the two other functions that we know that we're going to need because we know we're going to need values and we know we're going to need suits. So let's use uh, values 11 through 14 as jacks, queens, kings, and aces. So we can write a private function for our values, which is enum to list. 2 to 14. See there's no 1 because a 1 would be an ace and that's going on top as 14. So an ace is going to be the highest card that's going to trump even a king. And now that we have our values we're going to need our suits which are just going to be a list of the four suits. So that's going to be spades, diamonds, clubs, and hearts. So now we have values and we have suits, we can make a for comprehension. And we could say for every value in our whoops in our values and for every suit in our suits, we want to use our card struct. 
and our card is going to have a value of value and a suit of whatever the suit is going to be. So we can save this away and run our test and it passes. So now we have a function called new that creates a deck of cards and let's see what it looks like. If we call war dot deck dot new and let's actually save that to a variable called deck. Now you can see we have a list here of cards. War, deck, card, suit, spades, value 2. Suit, diamonds, value 2. Suit, clubs, value 2. So just like if you went and bought a new deck of cards, everything is here and everything is ordered. Now when we begin a game, we're going to want to shuffle the cards. So what we could do is we could take this for comprehension and say, okay, after you're done creating the deck of cards, go ahead and shuffle them with the shuffle function. So this is going to, let's recompile and run the same thing again. We can call this um, deck two is war deck new. And this gives us a deck where the cards are all shuffled. So now we have a two of diamonds, a 12, which is a queen of clubs, a six of spades, a 11, which is a jack of diamonds, nine of spades, 10 of diamonds. So you can see here now we have a deck of cards all shuffled and the length of our, our deck is 52. And that's it. We created a, a new deck of cards and they each have values and suits. War is suit agnostic. It really is just the value that's going to be compared. But the reason that we want to use suits is because so that we can match the suit with the picture later when we create a UI for this. So we're going to want we're going to need to know if you have a queen, should we show a queen of hearts? Should we show a queen of diamonds? What is the picture going to be of? So that's why we are going to keep track of the suits. So this set us up nicely for our first module to create a deck of cards. And now let's move on. Okay, then next create a game.ex file under the war directory. And here we can add some module documentation and say this is the structure for a game. What we're going to want to do is define a struct and some default attributes. We can say we're going to associate a user, so we'll have a user ID, and that's going to start out as none. We're going to have user cards, and we can initialize that with an empty list. We're going to have computer cards. We can do the same thing and initialize that as an empty list. And we can say uh, perhaps a status. We can initialize that and say that that is uninitialized. We can save that away. And just with this code defined here, if we open up our terminal with IEX dash capital S mix, we can alias war.game. And now we can actually create a game structure using the percent sign as the syntax. And we can pass in a user ID of one. And we could say the status maybe will be initialized. And now we have a game that we created, war.game. The computer cards are empty and the user cards are empty, but we have a user ID and a new status. So this game module is going to be able to create a new game. How we're going to do that is by calling the gen server. And the gen server is going to create a new process associated with this game and then in the initialization of the gen server, we can deal out the new cards and we can take care of all of the logic that we need for creating a new game. 
I think that this is a good place to stop and we could do the game logic in the next video. So we'll stop here. Then in the next video, we'll go through and create our actual server file. And the server, just to give you a preview, we'll use gen server. We'll bring in the gen server functionality like this. And we're going to have the client API start link. This is going to call the gen server start link. And what we're going to pass in is the Visual Studio Code, by the way, gives you a great option for documentation. Um, so you can see exactly what we're going to pass in the module where the callbacks are going to be located and then uh, the name of it and any options that you want to pass in. So we're going to name our gen server after either the game ID or the user ID or something like that. So we'll pass in some type of ID and when we call the server we're going to give it the ID and then in our server we're going to call start link that's going to initialize the game and on the server side, once we call start link, it's going to run the init function. And in the init function is where we're going to actually set up our game. That's where we're going to make calls to the deck module that we created earlier and create a new deck of cards and deal the cards out and set everything up for the game to be played. So we're going to handle all that in this function in this initialization function here. So in order to do that, we're going to have to, of course, alias the or dot deck. And this is what we're going to take care of in the next video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you're creating any type of card game, um, you could always reuse this deck module for creating cards. So we'll create a deck of 52 shuffled cards, which could be useful for any type of card game that you're creating. In this video, we took care of the deck module. We defined a structure for our game. So this is starting to kind of take shape here. And then we kind of made a little skeleton for our gen server, which we're going to handle in the next video. We're going to go over all of the gen server functionality and how gen server works and how we could take advantage of Erlang's OTP in order to build a scalable, fault tolerant, and performant application. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll keep posting more videos. Until next time, keep building.